Why did Skycoin focus primarily on mesh internet? So the flagship project in Skycoin is called Skywire. So we have several hardware products and we have a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, telecommunication company basically called Skywire. And the idea is that the community will own the infrastructure and will, and if you, if you, if you're forwarding packets for your neighbor basically similar to Tor, and if you are providing services, you're getting paid coins. And if you're consuming the services of the network, you are consuming coins. And what we realized very early on is that we need to find a, the killer application of blockchain. I think Bitcoin and Ethereum are interesting as a technology demonstration, but they're essentially widgets. I don't think we've found the, the real killer application of blockchain yet. And so what we wanted to do with Skywire was we wanted to create the first application for blockchain that people actually are using in their daily lives. We wanted to create something that was actually useful and that people would pay money for. And we wanted to give the community a way to participate in Skycoin. So um, I don't think that it's enough just to have, oh, I have this cool thing, or I have this widget, or I have this. And people say, oh, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. You know, and they might get some ICO money, but we need to move beyond that and we need to start looking for actual real world applications where blockchain as a payment solution uh, makes sense technologically and makes sense socially and makes sense economically. So the Skywire was the, we w looked at 50 different projects and the Skywire was the best project in terms of economics, uh, the politics and the social aspect of blockchain for what we were trying to do. And then this also brought Skycoin into hardware. So now we're doing hardware wallets and we're doing you know, these uh, sky miners and computing clusters and SOC and we're doing um, like we might have an S uh, SOC which is a system on our chip which is it's like a cell phone processor but we'll have a crypto accelerator on there and we'll have different types of uh, products used by corporations as they start adopting blockchain uh, for databases or for or payment solution and um, or so I think that um, I think it's really important that we just get blockchain into the real world and we get it out of this little bubble that it's currently stuck in. What is your final vision for Skywire? So the idea behind um, 5G, the, the current, the, if you look at the current way that the, uh, the internet is structured, um, there's a lot of fiber everywhere. There's a lot of bandwidth and most of the costs are in the last mile between the house and the fiber optic cable. So I and I'll and give an example is I had a meeting with the Minister of Communications for a country and the country had invested billions of dollars to run fiber optic cables almost to every single block, but they're unable to actually run the cable from the home, uh, from the from the curb to the block because they have to get permission, they have to get permits, they have to dig up the street and the sidewalk and they get blocked at the local level, they get blocked at the city level, they get blocked for like six years getting all these uh, construction permits and, and so on. So this, so this is what's called the last mile problem, which is we have almost infinite bandwidth everywhere in almost every major urban area and even rural areas, um, but we're unable to connect the, uh, the house, the, the premise, the building to the fiber optic cable. And we're, we're currently, the telecommunication industry is in a sort of a shakeup right now where before we, we'd have these cell phone companies and, and you would have a cell phone network and the cell phone network provider would own all of its cell phone towers. Now the density of cell phone towers is becoming so great that the, the cell phone provider has realized that they're losing money on all these towers. They, they have to pay this many thousand dollars a month for the towers and the maintenance and to go into the 5G transition, they realize that they're going to have to increase the cell phone tower density to the point that they have a cell phone tower on every block and it's going to be ridiculously expensive to maintain those networks. So they started basically disintermediating the, the cell phone towers and their, their infrastructure and their base points and basically letting third party companies uh, operate that equipment. and. They decided that they don't want to be the equipment owner. They don't want to lease. They don't want to uh, lease the premise, and that they want another company to manufacture the equipment, and they want a third company to operate the equipment, and that they will just rent the base points, the the base stations from those providers, because the cell phone company makes the money. The carrier makes the money charging you for internet access and cell phone access and SMS access, and uh, they lose money having to pay the cost of the cell phone towers. So they said we're going to disintermediate. We're going to keep the profit part of our business. And we're going to we're going to uh, get rid of the cost part of our business. 
So when we did Skywire, we said we're building this decentralized, you know, this new internet that's going to replace the current internet and this new method of community-owned infrastructure. And we thought our enemy was going to be these telecom providers and these carriers. And as soon as we started announcing what we were doing and we started releasing our hardware products, the telecom backhaul providers actually started coming to us and said, can we use your network? Uh, can I use this for cell phone backhaul? Can I use this for providing streaming video to houses? Can I use this to operate my wireless internet service provider? So with Skywire, it's actually, uh, and we've even had countries, the, the prime minister of a particular country come to us and they said, we're, we, they have a state telecom and that everyone in the country is very angry at the state telecom because their prices are really high and their quality of service is low. And the telecom is also losing money. So they have to tax people a huge amount to pay for the telecom, which is just losing money. So they said, we're going to privatize our telecom. And so they asked us to come into this country and, and the, the guy who's running the state telecom also wants to be in on the privatization. So it's like, okay, we'll get you this and we'll get you that. And can you bring this over here? So uh, because one of the election issues in that country that year was the cost of the telecom and the quality of service. And they said, okay, we'll get rid of the state telecom or privatize it. So the telecom industry and the ISP industry is very dynamic right now and it's changing rapidly. And we're, we're seeing a transition from just for instance, wireless internet service providers. So if you're able to get a 10 gigabit connection over 5G, there's no reason to have a cable modem or even fiber. And so we're starting to see even the wireless carriers competing with the uh, the fixed line carrier, the, fiber, the, the Fios carrier, the cable carrier. And we're, we saw the cable company competing with providing internet over 56K. People used to have the telephone lines and the money for the ISP went to the telecom to the telephone uh, telephone company, and the money for the cable went to the cable company. Now the cable company provides the internet, and now the cable is used to provide the internet, and now the video goes over the internet. Now we have the uh, third-party wireless internet service provider, and now the phone goes over the wireless, and the video goes over the wireless, and the internet goes over the wireless, which is called triple play. So what we're seeing is actually what's called convergence. In, in the 5G transition, as we go into this new type of network infrastructure, the difference between a local access point, Wi-Fi point, and a cell phone tower is going to disappear. Because basically we have what's called femtocell, which is to get the speed that is necessary for, for the 5G and 6G uh, G transition, we're going to have to place towers or base stations in every room, in every building, in every floor. And some countries like China have state telecom carriers, and when they build a new building in China, there's actually a cell phone access point in every single roof. Uh, I've seen like the, con the concrete slabs, the, the bare strip building, and the, the China Telecom, uh, China Mobile already put these uh, cell phone towers in every single uh, floor of every single building as they were constructing the building. So in some countries like China, that they already have those femto cells, but in, in legacy countries where the buildings are 100 years old or 200 years old and they don't have the, the, the fiber and the access points, they're going to need other solutions in order to achieve the, the, the density of these base stations they need for the 5G and 6G transition. So we're entering this period called convergence. And in convergence, there's not going to be a difference between a telephone company and a cable company and a and, uh, and an internet service provider and a mobile carrier, and there's not going to be the difference between a cell phone provider and a Wi-Fi access point. It's going to be one global network. And it turns out that there's other requirements for this network because we're seeing a lot of autonomous systems. Like we're seeing, uh, you might have five or 10 or 20 robots in your house, and you might have a thousand sensors. You might have a temperature sensor in every room and a microchip in every single light bulb and light switch in your house. So your, your house is going to become, a, is going to become a, a, a supercomputing grid. It's going to be a cluster of a thousand computers that are all contacting each other. And imagine if I plug a light bulb in and that light bulb needs to, you have to pay $10 a month for that light bulb to get data from a cell phone carrier. Or imagine if you plug a light bulb in and you have to put in the Wi-Fi password for the light bulb and then you change your Wi-Fi router and, and you can't turn the light bulb on and off. Because the light bulb is going to communicate wirelessly, it's going to have a CPU in it, it's going to communicate wirelessly to the light switch. And your light switch might not be attached to the wall, it might be on your cell phone or it might be controlled by a tablet surface or it may become like location ag agnostic. So and we're, we, we have to have a, a network that allows devices to connect automatically to the network but at the same time has security provision so that your network isn't hacked and sending botnet data all over the place. And so you need to have an open, so sort of a global open network that 
can allow billions of devices or trillions of devices, hundreds of trillions of devices to um, connect. And so what we're seeing is uh, we're, we're going through this fifth industrial revolution where basically every motor in a factory, every light bulb, every every device is going to have, you're going to have a machine and it's going to have 65 computers in it. It's every single sensor is going to have its own computer, every light bulb is going to have its own computer, every motor, every power supply. And when the power supply breaks, it's going to say, go replace me. And you're going to, you're going to have modules that can be swapped out and industrial equipment. You're going to see a lot more teleoperation. So for instance, if I'm operating a bulldozer, I can put cameras on the bulldozer and motorize it. And suddenly uh, I can have my bulldozer in Israel or my bulldozer in Russia and I can hire people in the Philippines to control that bulldozer and to operate the bulldozer. So I can use the labor cost over here to control a machine over here. So we're going into this period of teleoperation where we need to have very low latency, constant connections. Uh, we need to have multi-homing. We need to have uh, uh, what's called the location agnostic networking and different requirements for the next generation uh, networking. So the final vision of Skywire is to replace the current internet with uh, with something that meets the requirements for the 5 and 6G transition and this uh, network convergence and IoT connected world that we're entering.